So in this video we're going to look at a trigonometric substitution example where we're going to e uh, evaluate a definite integral and we're going to change the limits of integration to do this. <clears throat> so here's the integral, the integral from 0 to 3 of x cubed over square root of x squared plus 9. So right away I want to notice that I've got an x squared plus 3 squared. I've got the sum of squares, which means I have the legs of a right triangle. So if I construct the right triangle that I'm working with, this is my angle theta. I have one length, one leg with length 3, one leg with length x, and the hypotenuse is going to be the square root of x squared plus 9. From this right away, what we can see is that the tangent of theta it's going to equal x over 3 multiplying both sides by 3 we get 3 tan theta equals x to get x cubed we would just need to cube both sides so we would get 3 cubed is 27 we would get 27 times the tangent cubed of theta equals x cubed so we know what x cubed can be replaced with uh, to figure out what dx can be replaced with, we'll take this first and easiest relationship and take uh, d dx of both sides. So if we do that, we get 3 times the secant squared of theta times, by the chain rule, we take the derivative of the inside function. So we get d theta dx equals the derivative of x is 1, multiply both sides by dx and we see that dx can be replaced with 2 secant squared of theta d theta. We have one other substitution that we need to deal with. We have the square root of x squared plus 9 in the denominator. So what I would like to notice is that the cosine of theta, the cosine of this angle theta is going to be the adjacent over the hypotenuse which is square root of x squared plus 9 and uh, I don't have a 3 up here so uh, what I could do what, there's more than one way to handle this one thing I could do is just multiply this by 3 over 3 which is 1 so a third of 3 is 1 and then I see that I can replace 3 over the square root of x squared plus 9 with a cosine of theta so if I go through and make the necessary substitutions I get 1 third times the integral and the integral is going to be 3 over the square root of x squared plus 9 gets replaced with cosine of theta x cubed gets replaced with 27 times the tangent cubed so we get a tangent cubed of theta we're going to be multiplying by that 27 out here but 27 divided by 3 is just going to give us a 9 and then uh, we have to make a substitution for dx and dx can be replaced with 3 secant squared of theta. The 3 is a constant. We'll factor out front giving us a 27 and we'll be multiplying by the secant squared of theta, d theta on the inside. Now I can keep going. Oh, I can change. I'm going to change the limits of integration now. So the whole point of doing this one is to uh, go over changing the limits of integration again in case it's been a while. So here I have x going from 0 to 3. So what we do is we come up and we grab this uh, relationship right here. We have this 3 times the tangent of theta equaling x. And the question is if, you, if x is 0, if x is 0, what does theta have, have to be? Well, we know the tangent of 0 equals 0. So if theta is 0, we get 3 times the tangent of 0. The tangent of 0 is 0. 3 times 0 is 0. So it would still work out to start the limits at 0. The upper limit has x being 3. So we ask the question, what happens when we put a 3 here? And then I could divide both sides by 3. So Dividing both sides by 3 would give me a 1 right here. 
and the tangent of what angle equals 1 and what we want to remember is that the tangent of 45 degrees equals 1 because at the 45 degree mark the x and the y coordinates are both root 3 over 2 so we get root 3 over 2 divided by root 3 over 2 is 1 but we're working in trigonometry so we don't use degrees we use radians so in radians 45 degrees is pi over 4 so we'll run this integral from 0 to pi over 4 that way we don't have to switch back into rectangular coordinates at any point so I'm going to get 27 times the integral from 0 to pi over 4. Um, cosine is the reciprocal of the secant, so the cosine is going to cancel one of the two secants. We have secant squared here. That's going to leave us a secant of theta. And then I have the tangent to an odd power, so I want to save a tangent. So I save a tangent of theta, which leaves me with a tangent q, uh, tan, sorry, a tangent squared save a tangent leaves me with the tangent squared and we want to convert the tangent squared using the Pythagorean identity over to a secant that way we can make the substitution u equals the secant because the derivative of the secant is the secant tangent things will clean up really nicely if, with that substitution so we want to remember that the Pythagorean identity says that one pl plus one form of the Pythagorean identity says one plus the tangent squared equals the secant squared. So if we subtract one from both sides we see that the tangent squared can be replaced with the secant squared of theta minus one. So what I would do right here is make that replacement. I would say hey this tangent squared I kept a tangent on the tangent cubed but there's a tangent squared left I want to convert that tangent squared into secant squared of theta minus 1 here's my d theta and the reason for doing that is then I can make the substitution u equals the secant of theta u equals the secant of theta which is nice because du d theta if we take the derivative with respect to theta of both sides the derivative of the secant is the secant of theta times the tangent of theta multiplying both sides by d theta tells us that du can be replaced with secant theta tan theta d theta or secant tan d theta can be replaced with du so we're making another substitution we come over here secant tangent d theta gets replaced with du and here the secant gets replaced with u because we made the u substitution so we wind up with the integral of u squared u squared minus one and the secant tangent d theta being replaced with du and now I can change the limits of integration again I can say hey I have u equals the secant of theta but what happens when th when uh, theta is zero well when this uh, the secant of zero equals one remember the secant is the reciprocal of the cosine function and the cosine of zero is one and the res is one so one over 1 over 1 is still going to be 1 so I can replace the lower bound of integration with a 1 because when theta is 0 u is 1 and then I can do the same thing for the pi over 4 I can say hey when theta is pi over 4 what is u well, remember the cosine of pi over 4 is root 2 over 2 so the secant's going to be the reciprocal of that. So u is going to equal 2 over the square root of 2, which actually simplifies to just the square root of 2. So we can change this upper bound of integration again over to the square root of 2. And now we integrate. We get 27 times the antiderivative of u squared is 1 third u cubed. The antiderivative of 1 is u. And we're evaluating over the integral from 1 to the square root of 2. Now we do our substitution, so we get 27 times 1 third times we have the square root of 2 cubed minus the square root of 2 goes in for u minus parentheses 1 goes in here we get 1 cubed times a third is a third minus a 1 
close all the parentheses and now we can start to clean things up a little bit um, the square root of 2 cubed is real uh, the square root of 2 cubed is really root 2 times root 2 times root 2. So root 2 times root 2 is 2. So this really simplifies to 2 square root of 2. So right here, square root of 2 cubed is really just 2 times the square root of 2, or 2 thirds times the square root of 2. So if I think about this, here I have my 27. 2 thirds minus, 2 thirds of a root 2 minus 1 root 2 is going to be negative 1 third square root of 2. Here I have minus a third plus a 1, but minus 1 third plus 1 is really plus 2 thirds. And then we can, uh, we could, we could uh, actually look at 27 as being 3 times 3 times 9 and if we distribute the 3 into the parentheses we clean things up a little bit so I'm running out of room down here distribute that 3 into the parentheses we get a 9 on the outside with a negative square root of 2 and the 3 would go in and give us a plus 2 and usually usually you write it with the subtraction in the center. So there's the integral uh, evaluated.